So a green vehicle this isn't. It is, however, very brown. Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. This time I'm joined by the brand new Isuzu D-Max. So as always, I will take you around the vehicle, talk you through the specification and give you my first impressions. So yes, aha, the new D-Max. You may have spotted two things. Firstly, yes, it is very, very grubby. If I bring you down the side, you will see yes, it is pretty filthy. The second thing is the location of the number plate. It's on the dash, not on the front of the vehicle. Now, now the reason for both of these things is yesterday I went all the way up to just near Leicester to a place called Avalanche Adventure. And yes, I took this off road and my word, it was such a fun experience. We removed the front number plate just in case it fell off or got broken like it did on the Ranger Raptor. I tested many, many moons ago. So fear not, this will be cleaned up Isuzu. I will clean it this afternoon and reattach the number plate. Uh, the reason why I didn't clean it for this video is I thought it would just add to the vibe and the uh, the the kind of image of what, what a pickup truck should be and what it can do. So I thought, you know what, actually, I think it look, looks pretty cool to film it as it is. Some of you may um, prefer a clean vehicle, but hey, I've chosen to, to present a vehicle that has been well used. So the D-Max is available in three ranges, business, all purpose, or adventure. And within those three ranges, you've got a mix of four trim levels. So in business, you have the utility trim level, which is a bit more bare bones, a bit more basic and utilitarian. That's more designed for fleet customers or someone who wants a rugged pickup truck but without any bells or whistles. Then you've got the all-purpose, which is still aimed at commercial vehicle buyers, but also a bit of retail as well. And within that range, you've got the DL20 and this, the DL40. The DL, in case you're wondering, stands for differential lock. So yes, this vehicle as standard comes with a diff lock. And then you've got the Adventure range, which is made up of the range topping V-Cross, and that's more for your lifestyle market. Um, and that's got all the kit, all the bells, all the whistles. In regards to the DL DL40, the starting price for this one, which has the six-speed automatic gearbox, including VAT, is £37,510. You do get a lot as standard, as I will explain in a few moments. Now, just quickly speaking about the three ranges, Isuzu predicts that 45% um, of buyers will opt for an all-purpose model, and that 35% um, of buyers will opt for this, the, the DL40. So out of the, um, the trim levels that Isuzu offer for the new D-Max, this is likely to be the most popular. So yes, what do you get as standard? You get chrome detailing on the front grille, on the door mirrors, and also, <coughs> excuse me, on the door handles. You do get two-tone 18-inch alloys, alloys, although let's face it, there's just one tone there, which is brown. But normally, pardon me, when they're clean, you'd have silver and black. I've got keyless entry, front and rear parking sensors, uh, front and rear LED lights, reversing camera. I've also got side steps as well. And then step inside the cabin and you'll find, for what this vehicle is, quite an upmarket interior. You could step into this and almost think you're getting into um, a family SUV. The only thing given, giving it away that you're driving a pickup truck is quite a raised ride height, but it is a nice interior. You have leather seats as standard, the front of which are heated, a leather steering wheel. You've got a good amount of kit as well. In fact, let me step in to this rather grubby interior and I will show you exactly what I have at my disposal. I've got a seven inch touchscreen, which is okay, um, it works well enough. Although, in my experience, the Android Auto simply won't work. Um, it's very glitchy and I'm yet to get it 
connecting or indeed working. One thing I don't like about the seven inch touchscreen is the rather thick bezel. Look at that, you could park a bus in that gap. Now there is a way to cure this. You can, if this really bothers you, go for the range topping V-Cross as that offers a 10 inch touchscreen. Therefore it fills this space so much better. Let me turn on the ignition so I can show you the touchscreen. So you don't get navigation as standard, but you do have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, if you can get it to work, that is. I've also got DAB radio and Bluetooth, but nowadays that goes almost without saying. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it. I've got a six-speed automatic gearbox. For this model, the changes are 25% faster, which can only be a good thing. I do find this six-speed is quite indecisive, though, uh, particularly when you're at cruising speed and you, you're going through, through a corner um, or you want to kick down to get a bit of acceleration for an overtake, it can be a little bit dim-witted and a bit slow to react to what you're doing, but you can always put it into manual mode, so um, there, there is a way around it. As well as other features, uh, I may have mentioned it, I've got a reversing camera. Yes, the clarity isn't the brilliant, uh, isn't the, uh, the best, sorry, um, but it's good enough for what you need it for. Got dual zone climate control, as I've mentioned, heated front seats. You may have noticed the uh, two other buttons down here. So that is the button for the diff lock. And that is for the hill descent control. Down here, I've got a dial where I can change the drive settings. So right, let's get it, get the zoom, the, um, sorry, not the zoom, the autofocus sorted out. So you can have it in two wheel drive, which sends the power to the rear, as you would expect from a pickup truck. Twist it again, that gives you four wheel drive. And then, I'm just going to actually turn the engine on and then press it again. That gives you your low range gearbox and you should spot on here that you have everything coming up. And if I put it into drive now, there we go. It's now in low range and everything is, uh, the traction control is all turned off. Put it back into park and put it back into two wheel drive because I don't need low range for driving about Worthing. That would be silly. Now, as you can probably hear, the engine is quite grumbly. It is quite agricultural. Um, yes, I know this is this is a pickup truck, um, but yeah, I'd say the only two things to, to drive this car, sorry, to drive this pickup, it, it feels very similar to driving a big SUV. The only thing, the only things that give this way as being a pickup truck is the uh, slow steering. So it does require quite a few turns lock to lock, and also the. Uh, grumbly 1.9 litre diesel. I will speak about the diesel in due course. I don't need the engine on, I'm just, just um, running it for no reason, so I'll turn that off. In regards to practicality, there is a very good amount of it in the front of the D-Max. I've got not one, but two glove boxes, a top one and a bottom one, very handy indeed. Got a cup holder just there, quite similar to the one I had in my EP3 Civic Type R. I used to own a cubby in the middle, which you can put some smaller items into. Another cup holder on the right hand side, just there. A tray where you can put, put your smartphone. You don't get wireless phone charging as standard, but you do get a 12 volt socket just here and a USB port. Two cup holders in the middle. Storage underneath the center armrest. You have, you'd have to excuse my rubbish. A sunglasses holder, quite handy. Door bin, where you can fit a medium sized bottle into. I'm not done yet, guys. And I've also got this little cubby down here. So yes, needless to say, there is a lot of practicality in this vehicle. Oh, not quite closed up properly. Getting a good driving setup is as easy as one, two, three, because the steering wheel has got a good level of adjustment and my driver's seat as standard is electronically adjustable. So yes, very handy indeed. And yeah, the front of the D-Max is a nice place to be for a pickup. Like I say, you could almost be fooled into thinking you've just stepped into a family SUV. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel dated in here or like you've just, just stepped into a tractor. It's a nice place to be, but don't let all this fool you. Don't think this can't go off-road and do the nitty-gritty, because it certainly can. 
as I will prove in my review. All right, ignition is off, isn't it? Let me step into the rear so I can show you rear space. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, but even so, as you can see, I've got a good amount of space to step into, so which I would do, just get a leg up, try not to hit my head as I get in. So as you can see, I've got a good amount of knee room and I've got a good amount of leg room as well, if I just bring, bring you down here. So rear space is impressive and the headroom isn't too shabby either. Um, the lighting may be a bit iffy, so I can only apologise. Now, it has been quite some time since I drove the Ranger Raptor, but from what I can remember, this definitely has better rear space. I vaguely remember the Ranger Raptor being a bit, um, bit claustrophobic in the back from memory. Yeah, I don't think the legroom or indeed the headroom was particularly impressive. So yes, if that is important for you, uh, for your pickup, then I would definitely urge you to have a look at this. Um, just on the topic of this, if you don't need a double cab, the D-Max is also available as a single cab or an extended cab as well. But for the DL40, you can only have this as a double cab, if I'm not mistaken. Again, in the rear, there's a good level of practicality. I've got map pockets. You'd have to excuse the, uh, the rear seats. They will be cleaned up before I give the vehicle back to Isuzu. The door bins are of a good size. You can fit in a medium sized bottle with no issues. You've also got a USB port so those in the rear can charge their smart devices whilst on the move. Ventilation, you've got two cup holders in the centre armrest and of course you've got the armrest itself for better comfort. You've also got this which I think is really good, a hook that flips out of the rear seat which can, which can hold up to four kilograms. I just think that's a really clever touch. And little things like that go a long way. So Isuzu, that is very clever indeed. Speaking of very clever, you've got a lot of grab handles in here. So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, eight grab handles. So there's plenty to grip onto when this is being thrown about a quarry or something like that. Right, let me step out. There's also more storage, so you'll have to bear with me as I faff about to try and find it. So you can lift the seat up like so, and look at this, look. You've got storage underneath here. Not too sure what that is, that's, that's not my stuff, but yeah, look. Very clever, very, very clever indeed. And of course you've also got the rugged floor mat so you don't ruin the carpet. Now normally at this point I would speak about the boot but it hasn't really got a, a boot as such. So we'll speak about the, the rear bed. I may have covered this bit already, I, I can't remember. So if I have, I'll just cut to the next bit. But the bed is deeper than it used to be and Isuzu has tackled this problem. So for example, with it being deeper, it may be harder to get things in or out. Isuzu quite cleverly have integrated a step into the rear bumper so you can just step on, get what you need and step off. Very handy. Better still, I have dampers for the tailgate so it comes down smoothly, there's no crashing, no clattering and again little things like that really go a long way. Very good. The the uh, four-wheel drive system, the the um, transition between two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, so for, so forth, that's been made quicker. The changes for the six-speed automatic, they're 25% faster. The chassis has been made stronger as well. The front suspension has been tuned to give it better road manners and better handling. In fact, whoa, there we go. Give you a nice little glimpse of, uh, of what's underneath. So yes, the suspension arms have been um, uh, re uh, Retuned, I should say. They've been uh, revised, I think that's a better word, to give better handling on the road. And it, if you really want to get nerdy, I can, I'll tell you what, I can come down here and show you underneath. There we are. Give you a good glimpse. As you can see, it's mostly muddy. The 
The D-Max also has a good level of safety features as well, so you may have spotted. You've got the sensors, cameras and the radars, what have you, on the windscreen. So this has autonomous emergency braking, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, emergency lane intervention, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and forward collision warning. Um, also, if you go for this version, I'm pretty sure this version has it, it's got eight airbags, yes you heard me right, eight. So yeah, a very safe vehicle. In fact, this is the first pickup truck to get five stars from Euro NCAP in the latest round of testing. So yes, a very, very safe vehicle indeed. Let me talk you through the engine to conclude. Now there's so much I could tell you about this pickup truck. The press pack for my Zuzu is pages long, but there's only so much I can cover in just one video without making it too long. So if you do have any questions or if there's something I haven't covered for whatever reason, then please do get in touch using the comments section below. But anyway, onto the engine. How much of a faff can I make this? Normally I'm quite, quite quick at, ah, it's, it's right there, I went past it twice. Oh, heavy bonnet. Yes, I know, the state of that engine bay. Yeah, it's, um, like I say, the vehicle was well used yesterday. Anyway, underneath all that mud, you are looking at a 1.9 litre turbocharged diesel which offers 164 horsepower along with 360 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that in pound feet, I will drop a caption below. Now, this seems almost redundant, but let's talk about performance. So this, this will hit 62 miles per hour in around 13 seconds. More specifically, I believe it is 12.7 and the top speed is just north of 110 miles per hour. Now this can tow up to 3.5 tonnes and the payload capacity is over a tonne. So yes, this will meet what you need for your commercial vehicle requirements. Now in regard to fuel economy, on a combined run for this trim level and the six-speed automatic gearbox, Isuzu state you can expect up to 30.7 mpg, which is average at best. And in regard to CO2 emissions, this emits 241 grams per kilometre. So a green vehicle, this isn't. It is, however, very brown. Um, so yeah, there will of course be a full review coming, which will focus more on the off-road capabilities than the on-road capabilities. But I will also speak about how this vehicle is on the road as well as off of it as well. In the meantime, if you do have any questions or queries, please do get in touch. I will come back to you as quickly as I can and to the best of my ability. Um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Isuzu UK for supplying this vehicle for the week for me to test, but an even bigger thank you to you guys watching. Uh, so yes, I do hope you have found this video useful or helpful. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.